The journey upon Mother Earth, one walking into the next moment, into the next moment, into the next moment. Some walking with steps of ease, others walking with steps that feel difficult. And doesn't it hold great truth that steps of ease can become steps of difficulty and steps of difficulty can become steps of ease. The contrast of life shows us many things. The contrast of life holds the expansion of life itself. For in the uneasy, difficult travel, ones will go in search we want to say for a higher road, go in search to envision, to see beyond what one is experiencing. How does one change difficult steps to steps of ease? And how does one change steps of ease to difficult steps? It sounds like it is a choice, and it is, but not a choice as in the contrast of life, for the contrast of life is not a choice. The contrast of life is. The choice is knowing the steps upon Mother Earth do change. All things in motion, all things in energy, all things moving forward in time, if you will. So you're walking a beautiful, steady pace, truly enjoying the scenery, truly enjoying the surroundings. All things feel lined up, lit up, expansive and one. And something enters your travel. Or perhaps you lose something in your travel. And all things come to a abrupt halt, if you will. Just like traveling along and all of a sudden a roadblock. So you are experiencing a roadblock, a setback, a hurdle. Or perhaps it feels deeper than that. You're experiencing great sorrow, great loss, not not even sure if a next step will be taken and not even sure if the next step is even desired. So when the contrast of life appears along the journey of life, The choice is how to perceive, how to view what has presented itself, ease to difficulty, difficulty to ease. The perception of the flow, if you will, the abruptness of something entering or again, the abruptness of something lost and leaving. Who walks in? Who walks out? The journey of life traveled with many souls, many that bring something to one's journey, many that leave something to one's journey, and many that take from one's journey, if you will. Higher consciousness allows the space to see the roadblock, to see it a little more clearly, to see the expansion beyond the roadblock. So metaphor, but not really. You're moving along, say you are traveling, and there is a roadblock. Or you are traveling, 
and there is a halt in all traffic, a traffic jam ahead. And you cannot turn around and you cannot move forward. A roadblock feels like one can turn around. But the journey of life, one must continue moving forward. When a roadblock appears in life, when something comes along that disrupts your personal inner peace, your contentment, your joy, your ease, your grace, if you will. When an upset in life occurs, and we're, you, we're being mild, we understand that there are many, many levels of upset. So something has occurred that is truly, it feels like it has just stopped your journey. The choice is to understand that you have a choice to understand. Now, what do we mean by that? You're traveling along and something occurs. There's a roadblock. So there are many ways that ones would receive the roadblock or they want to get around it, they get around it. They go around it. They jump over it, depending on the roadblock itself. But what if there was space and time given for one to ponder the journey of life while pondering the roadblock? Meaning, one is moving along and something has occurred that it feels like all things have stopped. Something has come along that has shaken up a world and it doesn't feel that there's any movement ahead. Higher consciousness allows space for ones to look, we want to say, above the roadblock. Now, what do we mean by that? So let us say you are in a traffic jam and there is many vehicles in this traffic jam. Rows, lines, and expansion of vehicles in a traffic jam. There is no moving forward, there is no moving backward. If you could leave the vehicle and enter, let us say, a helicopter, and you could rise above in the same place you are, you can hover above your own vehicle, but you can see now far ahead to what is causing the traffic jam. You could evaluate how long it would be before the traffic started moving, etc. But when ones are in the vehicle, metaphor or not, in a standstill, something has come along that has prevented movement forward. One does not have the ability from where they are standing to see what is causing the roadblock. So one then must find we want to say find the response to what is being presented. So some not knowing if they can move and when they can move and what is causing the roadblock, what is causing the traffic jam. They can become extremely irritated, frustrated, angry, and the horns start honking and one start yelling at one another, yelling at the neighbor beside in the other vehicle, smashing their fists on the steering wheel, all standing still. And then another may choose that space and time to turn on the radio, find a station, listen to some music perhaps, 
they may take the time to just connect within oneself, to ponder things in life perhaps they have been putting off pondering. Perhaps this time of stillness brings forth the sensation of peacefulness because of the stillness. Not understanding when traffic is going to move forward, not understanding why it's not moving forward, just understanding there is a traffic jam. One takes that opportunity to explore within oneself, to bring forth joy in an experience that could also offer anger. So there you can see where it does become a choice. One chooses to be angry and they feel, they feel that they are right in their conclusion to feel anger. Perhaps they need to get somewhere. Perhaps they are just frustrated. Perhaps it just was the sugar coating of an already frustrated day. And the other, finding peace in the moment when they cannot move anywhere. So if you were able to rise above and see beyond to what caused the slowdown or why something happened, because so many times ones will say, I don't know why this happened. All things were so good. I thought everything was so good. And he or she left me. I thought we were so close and so bonded that we were going to be together a lifetime. And they left without even a note. I thought this business was so grand to find my success, to have all my dreams completed. I, this was my dream business. I didn't know that fill in the blank, something happened that customers did not come or something happened that the business did not flourish and out of my control, I could not prevent it. I could not prevent the business from closing and all things feeling a journey lost. So in a traffic jam, a helicopter can see, the ones in the helicopter can see far beyond to allow space. But moving along your journey of life, it is difficult to see beyond the space. Difficult to see why something has taken place. And so many times ones never understand why the roadblock, the upset, the hurdle, the loss, the tragedy was in their way, meaning in their pathway as they walked upon Mother Earth. Higher consciousness allows one to elevate, and we want to say elevate in the sense, naturally, repeating, we know, compassion, love, kindness, and forgiveness. What if everyone in the traffic jam applied love, brought love forth, and instead of yelling at the one, perhaps a silent prayer for another, a silent good wish, a silent blessing, a smile, a wave. What if everyone did that in the traffic jam? What would the vibration look like? What would the vibration look like? And would it speed up the travel? That would be undetermined. 
but what it would be what it would do is create a loving vibration to be felt among all and peaceful hearts and peaceful souls can move forward more elegantly if you will move forward with grace the one that is losing their temper and smashing their hand on the dash of the car is not in the place of grace. So where are we going with this dialogue? To share with you that higher consciousness is rising above from where you are standing to see a different perspective of it. Now, to see a different perspective of it, think of the scale 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest, and we're sharing that higher consciousness, compassion, love, forgiveness, kindness, is at a very high end, 8, 9, 10. So higher consciousness allows one to rise above in the state of compassion, kindness, love, and forgiveness, allowing one to see clearly. Now, not perhaps allowing one to see so clear they understand what has just taken place, meaning there is a relationship and one person just leaves it, not even leaving a note. The other didn't see it coming, not at all, blindsided. That one may never in their lifetime understand why the other left. And so many times it does happen. They have no idea. They were just left. That's what they know. But they have no idea as to why. Higher consciousness removes the why. Higher consciousness allows a space to only bring compassion to what has just happened, to only bring love to what has just happened, and kindness and forgiveness to what has just taken place. Now, ones will say, This is BS. This is BS. How can I feel compassionate about someone leaving me without even a note? Mm. What you are doing is rising, raising your conscious consciousness level to the place where you see life differently, a little more clear without the why. How many times in life do you not understand the why of something? Why something took place, why it had to happen, why now, why me? Why to my loved one? Why when I just got started in life, when everything was so lined up, why such a blow? Why? So often, if you just remove the why, it creates a space of relief. And most will say, no, knowing why is the relief. I want to know why my partner left. I want to know why this happened or that happened. Fill it in. I want to know why I was doing so well. I want to know why that me, as a very loving person, as a very compassionate person, as a very kind person, as a very forgiving person, why, why did this happen to me? Why did I have to lose everything that I loved or most things that I love? Why? Higher consciousness allows one to see it without the why, just seeing it as it is. 
there is a phrase that is going around. It is what it is. It is what it is. Meaning acceptance of what it is because you cannot change it. Any more than one can change the traffic jam in the moment they are in it. One cannot control another. Can they change their lover leaving? Perhaps not. So if the focus is on the why something tragic happened or something awful happened or something that feels so horrendous, so painful, why it happened, Higher consciousness allows space for one to let go of why it happened and only applying compassion to the situation, experience, event, if you will. Letting go of the why. Because so often ones want the answers to why something when there really isn't an answer. There are things in life that would never provide an answer that would soothe a heart. There are some things in life that the why can never be explained or shared or understood. There are times in one's life that one has to free themselves of why something happened and bring forth the love in. And we understand it is extremely difficult to bring forward any love when there is great loss, when there is tragedy, when there is heartbreak, horrendous, horrendous cruelty. Where would one find any love at all? And where would one find a place to be forgiving? Where would one find kindness? And where would one find compassion? And the answer is held within. Eternal light held within. Sometimes letting go of why something has taken place or is taking place that one has no control, one cannot understand. Higher consciousness allows a space for one to let go of wanting an answer as to why. Spending days, thoughts, preoccupied with why me? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Without ever receiving an answer can truly burden one's soul, heart, mind, body. For one then turns to the despair of Higher consciousness, we mentioned, is absolute freedom. It is living free. It is not free of something, we want to say, bad happening, but again, something that feels unwanted or label it what you will. Down the road, as time moved on, it could be the best thing that ever happened. Now we want to be careful here, we're having a general conversation. There are some things that one would experience that it would never feel that there's a silver lining or that it ever should have happened. There would be no space down the road to say, oh, I can look back now and see this was good for me or good for the other. There are certain circumstances that ones would never find that space, nor would they want to. 
but what one's confined space in is forgiveness that it happened. Compassion that it happened. Love that it happened. And again, some things feel so unloving. But love brought forth holds a vibration of relief and healing. If something has taken place and one holds great anguish and anger, frustration and even rage, if it is held and carried far down the road for many years, it does not change what happened but it does change the person holding the anger, the resentment, the rage, the frustration. When one finds a place of even a little compassion towards something so horrendous, or even something that might be small to one and not small to another, They find relief. They cannot change the experience, but they can soothe their heart enough to move steps forward. Steps will move forward. And all we are sharing is that in time, ones can choose to place love in the steps traveled instead of condemned, condemned steps. Steps of aggression, steps of hatred, steps of total despair that one only takes perhaps a little step once in a while, cannot move the rest of the time little movement going forward. We have mentioned that all emotions are meant to be felt. It would be absurd if something tragic happened and one's, oh, light and love. No. The depths of your soul, the depths of your being would feel the emotions of the pain, the sorrow, the anguish, fill it in. It is when one brings forth compassion towards it that healing is found. There is little healing when one continues to feel the same way year after year after year, bringing it with them every step. Finding love for the roadblock and finding love for the journey is the relief for one's heart. Compassion, kindness, forgiveness, love heals a heart and maybe not completely, maybe not fully. There are some things that it would feel absolutely absurd to never feel the pain of it. Your heart can hold love towards the pain in healing. Acknowledging the pain will remain but does not have to be all. Higher consciousness is healing. Higher consciousness is yours. And so when one just lets go of why something happened, not knowing the bigger picture, not knowing why it happened, 
not understanding at all, perhaps losing all faith in all things, perhaps condemning the heavens, if you will. When one can place down the why, why me? Because an answer will surface that perhaps isn't the answer that heals a heart. Why me? One may ask, why me? And the answer, well, because you don't deserve anything good. And it happens many times. So dropping the why me, why about anything, creates healing far quicker, if you will, than if one took the time day in, day out, day in, day out, months into years, years into decades, trying to define why. Higher consciousness relieves pain and brings forth healing. There is great love for you.